Hey, and welcome back to my virtual consulting three-part video series. Now, in the first video, I gave you six reasons why I think you should become a virtual consultant and listed the benefits of virtual consulting. If you haven't watched that video, then I highly recommend you go back and watch that video now. When getting started with virtual consulting, there are loads of things to think about, like how to find an idea, how to price your service, and get discovered by clients online. Now, I've had all of these concerns before, and I'm here to put a lot of these issues to bed. Now, in this video, I'm going to share some of the common mistakes that I made along the way so that you can avoid them altogether. For example, when getting started with virtual consulting, I often underpriced my services. I thought that because I was starting a new business that I couldn't justify charging more. And I made the huge mistake of going too general. I started off as a productivity coach instead of helping clients with a very specific problem in a very specific niche. Now, if you can avoid these kinds of common mistakes, you can actually get started and make decent money from virtual consulting very quickly. So let's get into today's lesson. Here are the three most common mistakes that people make when getting started. So here are my three major mistakes that I myself made, and I wanna make sure that you avoid them altogether so you can fast track your progress uh, towards becoming a virtual consultant. So number one is charging hourly. That's right, this is probably the biggest mistake that coaches, freelancers, and consultants make when getting started. Hourly billing is bad, in fact, for a few reasons. And before I go into these reasons, yeah, this is a big one because a lot of people just jump to the conclusion that, oh, I'm a freelancer, I'm gonna consult, I need to come up with an hourly rate. How do I decide that? Oh, I don't know, I'll just guess and we'll kind of go from there. That is the wrong approach to take. In fact, you should not be charging hourly at all. Why? So firstly, it rewards inefficiency. So why should a bad freelancer, coach, consultant get paid more for taking a long time to, de de to deliver results? Surely a good worker, you know, someone who delivers the goods in less time should be earning more, right? And, but with hourly billing, freelancers actually get rewarded for being slow. This is not in the best interest of the client. The, the, the mechanics here, the economics just don't make sense. Why would you earn more for doing something slowly? It increases risk for the client. So often clients ask, you know, how long is this going to take? Uh, but it's sort of like asking how long is a piece of string? You know, if you provide, um, if you then provide an estimate uh, to a client saying that a job's going to take 10 hours, the client will make a purchase decision based on this estimate. Now, if you take 15 hours, their cost has gone up 50%, you know, the difference between 15 and 10 hours, that's 50% more, and they're not going to be happy. So there's more risk for the client when you charge by the hour. It ties also, reason number three, it ties your work to time instead of outcomes and value. So clients really um, don't care about your time. They only ask about hourly rates as it's easy to quantify and because there's nothing else really to ask about. But really, the client just wants a problem solved or a specific outcome uh, achieved. And if you can give the client this for a fixed price, you're lowering the risk for them and you can tie your price to the actual value that you're delivering. So for other, in other words, if you help someone to earn, let's say $100,000 over the course of a year, maybe through web development, then you can command a higher price. So kind of these two last two reasons are sort of linked. Um, you're, with, with the pricing, with fixed pricing, <clears throat> you, you want to lower the risk for the client. With less risk, it's easier to commit to working with you. With hourly billing, it's much riskier because they risk, you know, you taking 10 hours on a job and then you don't get the job finished. It's lower risk if you can say, you know what, regardless of how long it takes, it's only going to cost you this much. Even if it takes me twice as long as we expect, your financial commitment is set in stone. That's not going to change. And so the client can make a purchase decision based on a fixed price that isn't going to change. So that's why, these are some reasons why hourly billing isn't good. Instead, you wanna be offering fixed prices and quantifying those in terms of value for your client. Okay, mistake number two is not being specific enough and focusing on the wrong idea. A lot of time can be wasted when you focus on the wrong idea, topic or niche, and in the beginning you may need to trial a few different things to find the thing that works for you, and that's what I did. So for example, when I first started my business years ago, I thought, you know, I'll be a productivity coach. I have a productivity blog, I'll try some productivity coaching. But the problem here is that there are loads of productivity coaches already out there, and if you don't specialize, it's hard to stand out. 
And so I gave up coaching uh, for years. I didn't do this. And then eventually in mid 2016, um, just as a bit of a test, I listed myself as an expert uh, and as, as an Asana expert on Clarity. Clarity.fm is a dial an expert service and you can list skills that you have and people call you up to get help. I thought, you know, why don't I just list this skill and skills that I have and, and see what happens. And I started getting a few calls from people who needed help with Asana. And I thought, hey, look, clearly this is like a recurring thing here. I've done a few calls now. What if I start focusing purely on helping people with Asana? Forget productivity. Let's just focus on this one very small part of productivity, which is one productivity tool that you can use, Asana. And so I can organize their accounts. I can train their teams and help them to get started with the product. Since then, I've had great success with this. Um, so instead of being an all around productivity coach, which is very general, I'm focusing on one very specific tool within the productivity space. In fact, you won't find this, uh, that many people are offering this consulting in, in this space. And so I can stand out very easily. In fact, I rank number one on Google, um, both organically and I have ads running as well, but number one, I rank um, for Asana Consulting. And so because there aren't many people in this space, I can justify higher prices. I'm a specialist. I am the Asana person. And I even say to people, as a little extra here, I even say to people, you know, they say, oh, do you know any other task management tools? And I say, no, I'm an Asana expert. I don't use Todoist. I don't use OmniFocus. I don't use any other task management tools. I specialize and I consult with the one that I know best, which is Asana. I use it every day. And if you want help with other tools, I'm not your person. But if you do want help with Asana, I'm probably the best person online you will find who can help you with it. And so to summarize point number five, when you're searching for your idea or niche to focus on, specializing and being specific is always best. You may think you're cutting people out of the market. I struggled a long time with this for a long time. And you sort of are cutting people out of the market, but this is a good thing because by specializing, you have less competition, you can justify higher prices, it's actually easier to stand out. So here we are, this is my original clarity listing. It's still up today, I still take calls. And here it is, it's productivity blogger and consultant, learn how to master your tools, expert in all things Asana, MailChimp, and Pipedrive. And you can see, uh, you can book a call with me at $2.50 per minute. And clarity um, is a great way to test skills. If you're just getting started with virtual consulting, I recommend setting up yourself as an expert on clarity and you can list your skills and start taking calls and you can be earning money very quickly using clarity. Little tip uh, down the bottom here. If you're going to get started on Clarity, I recommend doing some free calls for your friends to boost your rankings and get a few testimonials on your profile. So you can do free calls for friends. Uh, you can see the little numbers on the right here. You know, it says how many calls I've done, comments or sorry, testimonials and stars that I've got. It's really good to have some history so that when people are searching for those skills, they see that you've, you've done a few calls already. So I recommend doing that. But even if you... Um, you know, take just one thing away from this video. If you want to test one of the ideas that you have, try Clarity. This is how I started. And if I didn't do this, I probably wouldn't be where I am here today. So mistake number three is focusing your marketing efforts in the wrong places. Now, when it comes to getting discovered and finding clients, there's an almost endless list of things you can do. So how do you know what to focus on? Now, a lot of people think, you know, once I found an idea, I can just throw up some Facebook ads or launch my website and I'll get discovered. Sorry, but it's just not that easy. I wish it was. And uh, yeah, I think people just jump to Facebook because it's, you know, it's one of the biggest advertising platforms out there, but it's not always best suited for your expertise or your industry. Now, one of the advantages to specializing, like I just mentioned uh, in your topic, is that you can use specific channels and targeting to find your ideal clients. So for example, after specializing in Asana Consulting, I created Google Ads and I targeted people who search for phrases like, Asana Consulting or Asana Training. If people search these on Google, I pop up. And to get my ads in front of the people, this is, this is to get my ads in front of the people who are searching for the specific skills that I offer. And because not a lot of people offer services in this space, it's easy to stand out. And because I target very specific search phrases, I can get in front of the right people instead of throwing my money at Facebook and simply guessing. And so the key takeaway here is to focus on the channels and mediums where your audience hangs out. Again, this becomes a lot more obvious when you specialize. So for example, maybe you're targeting teachers and uh, you, you know that you can reach them through a specific online forum. Or for example, maybe you're targeting accountants and you know that accountants use LinkedIn or a specific group in LinkedIn. So you want to go to the places where your 
audience live. And the more specific you can be with your service and your training, the the better job or the kind of more, the easier this will kind of occur. And I think Google Ads is actually a great place uh, to start as well because you can put in some very specific search terms and target very specific phrases like I'm doing. So here we go. Here we go. This is uh, an ad. Um, these are my ads. So the top one there is an ad for my Asana Consulting. You can see I've got a nice um, description here. Need help with Asana? You can book a free 30-minute call. I've even got links to my Pipedrive and MailChimp Consulting to just show people that I do offer additional consulting as well. I've actually got this is the organic free result on on Google. So this one I haven't paid for, but it's up there as well. This is the ad. And so yeah, I really like um, focusing my marketing efforts on Google. For me, it's the number one channel. And I'll, I'll finish by saying that I don't try and cover every single medium. I'd rather just do Google really well. That works well for me. Rather than trying to be across LinkedIn and Twitter and Facebook and having a, a hand in every pie, I, I focus my marketing in the one or two places where it really works well for me. So there you are, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, then please take a few minutes to share this video online. And I'd also love it if you could leave me a comment below and tell me, what was your biggest takeaway from this lesson? So today I've talked about what you shouldn't do. Now in my How to Become a Virtual Consultant program, I go into extreme detail about what you should do, including finding and testing an idea, pitching clients, writing proposals, pricing, and everything in between. In the third and final video of this three-part series, I'll be sharing my entire virtual consulting process from getting discovered online to pitching clients and closing the sale. The final video will be emailed to you in a few days, so keep an eye on your inbox, and thanks very much for watching.